hot hotty. Thank you for watching the Give Me A Whole Year Wrestling Podcast. Hello and a very warm welcome to the Give Me A Whole Year Wrestling Podcast. My name is Ann and I'm joined today by... Uh, I think it's Dom. I think I am Dom today. I'm pretty confident it's Dom. You, It looks like your kitchen, dude. Yes, it's the Wrestling Kitchen and we have rebranded this... Uh, well, I have rebranded this kitchen from today as the Wrestling Kitchen. <laughs> I've had such guests as Drew McIntyre and Ace Austin... Chris Van Vliet, Chris Van Vliet <laughs> has been in the, Alicia Atu has been in this kitchen with me. You've had so a yes. lot of people in that kitchen. Indeed. A, a lot of famous superstars. Uh, I'm sure there was one that commented on your kitchen as well. It was Primate from NXT UK, yes. Primate yes. from NXT UK. And you've just done a recent interview, which was released yesterday. Yes, yeah, with just Jesse, of course, a uh, a UK wrestling uh, personality and broadcaster, YouTuber. Uh, we're going to be doing more of those. Obviously, uh, we are looking for independent wrestlers to speak to and wrestlers, but uh, we also want to speak to uh, YouTubers, broadcasters as well. So, yeah, we thought just Jesse would fit into that really well. Uh, absolutely lovely personality and a great chat just about wrestling, which was nice. Yeah, man, I've got an interview coming up in the next few days, which will be released on the channel. So keep an eye out for that. More of a gaming interview, which should be interesting. Um, also, what else have we done? You've done something else. There's a few things coming up. Uh, obviously, we've got um, we've got a few we've got a few ideas. We've got some sound sphere stuff coming up. Uh, some collaborative things. We've potentially got some more stuff with Impact, uh, which is exciting. So yeah, it's there's good a times, lot, man. Yeah, it is good times. It is good times. And you've got your thing with Scott J as well, where you're doing more gaming stuff. Oh, yeah, we might do a bit of gaming stuff on the channel, but we'll we'll see how that goes, see if it actually happens. I don't want to promise anything in case it doesn't. And um, the other thing that's just been released on the channel as well is our Extreme Rules predictions. So go and check them out if you are interested. We'll be They were released in the last 24 hours. Should we get straight on to the news, my friend? Yeah! Rock and roll. Let's talk about the probably the biggest news coming out of wrestling this week. Uh, Evil wins the IWGP Heavyweight and Intercontinental titles at New Japan Pro Wrestling Dominion. Mm, yeah, I mean, uh, who else has done that? Uh, the uh, winner-takes-all thing recently. Um, it's cool, though. It's cool. Uh, I mean, I like it. Join the Bullet Club as well. Quite a big Sorry. surprise. I think it sort of pushed a little bit because of the global pandemic in terms of they couldn't get the normal people that because it's Jay White, isn't it, in charge of Bullet Club at the yeah, minute? Yeah, yeah. So sure. it sort of pushed a little bit by that. But yeah, he turned on LIJ and went to Bullet Club as well. So yeah, so it's exciting times for New Japan because they've only just started doing stuff again, haven't they? They have, yeah, they have. Um, yeah, I watched the match. It was okay. We did a watch along last week with the Wrestle Story. Uh, one thing about New Japan is it, the matches start off a lot slower. It was a really interesting watch along, actually, just because we mm. was able to see like the Japanese style and where someone like Kenny Omega gets that over the topness from. Will Ospreay, have you watched any of Will Ospreay recently? Uh, not recently. I watched a lot of his uh, matches from the last couple of years. Obviously, he's uh, he's just um, had to, had a bout of depression. He's not doing so well at the moment. But, yeah, he posted so, on Twitter, yeah. Yeah, so I hope he's doing a lot better. But yeah, I haven't seen any of his recent matches. Um, he's changed a lot, man. He's changed so much. He's got that, do you know that Kenny Omega sort of uh, flair that he has? Yeah. He's got that. Um, and it seems a very Japan thing um, where mm. sort of uh, Western people come into Japan and and, uh, and sort of incorporate that scale that people people love, you know. And yeah. uh, obviously, Will Ospreay is a massive star in Japan at the minute. So, Yeah, yeah, no, it's, I mean, it's an exciting time for New Japan. Great to see him back. Yeah, I also need to go back and watch some, oh, what's the uh, English guy? The Great Submission. submission. The greatest submission. Uh, there's Zack Sabre Jr. Zack Sabre Jr. I need to rewatch him because I wonder if he's yeah, been he's in New done, Japan. He's done some good stuff recently. I know. I think he was involved in some tag team stuff mm. um, at the pay-per-view. I'm making it my mid-year resolution to try and watch a little bit more New Japan. Yeah, I think we should both try and watch a bit more New Japan. 
There we go. So maybe we'll see a bit more of that on the channel and you can join in with us on that. Uh, let's go into WWE and going to Charlotte Flair. Charlotte Flair's obviously been off TV for a while now and she's talked a little bit about why she's off TV. It was something that she put on Twitter that she didn't particularly want to talk about, but um, she <laughs> felt it necessary to talk about. And that's because of her breast implants obviously uh, charlotte has had plastic surgery and she was off a while ago because she had a leaking breast implant um and apparently it's come back again now that that can be really serious that sort of thing and obviously mm, these yeah. women uh, that are wrestling are causing a lot of impacts on them implants yeah yeah um obviously we wish charlotte the uh, best of health um, recovery obviously she's a pillar of the uh wb uh women's division so we'll see we'll see what happens and hopefully she can recover and, and be well yeah as overused as she is in wwe she is one of the best female wrestlers in the world without doubt i think yeah um, I, think, I think she's used quite rightly you know yeah yeah and I you know, know silicon poisoning is a is a serious thing you know and it's good that she was talking about last time she got it recovered she went for sort of one of the quickest option so that she could get back into the ring and do what she loves doing um again and this time it looks like it might be a little bit longer because she's going for more of a long-term fix mm, yeah i think i think it's better for the long term for her. uh you know i'm excited to see what the future holds for her. obviously some some dream feuds uh i think there's uh charlie's there on has just uh, done an interview with kofi saying that she'd like to get in the ring with charlotte at some point so there's going to be some and obviously there's potential of course always for ronda rousey to return so yeah, yeah you know we'll, we'll see what happens in the future and obviously all the best to to charlotte for a speedy recovery because we only saw one or two matches with charlotte and ronda didn't we was it it was we did one yeah solo match and then the wrestlemania match wasn't it yeah yeah because obviously Becky was out of one of the matches, and that's where sort of Becky's massive push comes from. So yeah, that's certainly something. The Charlie Thron things is interesting because she's classically ballet trained, isn't it? Isn't she? Yeah, she's just in a movie called The Old Guard on uh, Netflix, which is pretty cool. Um, and Kofi was doing an interview with her to promote that, and he was like, "Oh, I'd love to see you in the ring," you know. And she was like, "Yeah, let's do it anytime, any place." So you know, that's, so that's Kofi, exciting. Kofi versus Charlie Thron then. What? Did you say it was Kofi interviewing her? Yes. Yeah, so Kofi versus Charlie Theron's. No, right, so, so it's Charlie Theron first. Yeah. And, <laughs> and also, uh, Kofi said that they um, that she would do a great in a match with um, Becky Lynch or Charlotte. And Charlie Theron said that Charlotte or Becky Lynch would be a great opponent. So there was no mention of Kofi in there at all. Charlie Theron is a phenomenal actress. Have you ever seen Monster? Yes. Amazing film. Didn't did, did she win an Oscar for that, I feel like? She's definitely won, she's definitely got a few awards under her belt, yeah. Yeah, she is amazing playing Eileen Volney's the first uh convicted serial killer, is that right? Female serial killer? Uh you would know that. I would know that. I would know that. Let's move on because uh, I'm getting distracted talking about Charlie Theron. Uh next up we have raw viewership this week. Dude, really down. It yeah, was, really, it was really, really down. A new record. Yeah, low, right? Record low. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, uh, it's a difficult time. Apparently, a lot of people are saying it's not due to the COVID outbreak, that uh, the reviewership is down. It's just the quality of the programming. Uh, obviously, I think COVID's got to have something to do with it. Um, but yeah, I don't know, man. I don't know. We'll see. You know, We'll see if it can pick itself back up again. But it's not a good time. Not I a think good time. I, I I agree. I mean, you WWE will pass this off as a as it's COVID's fault, and I understand why people wouldn't be interested in it because of COVID. I think there's some serious like long term impacts that this can have on wrestling. It's mm -hmm. down seven percent from last year, but last year it was down from the previous year and the previous year before that, and. We've sort of seen this yeah. dwindling wrestling viewership, or certainly of Raw and SmackDown, in the in the past few years. Now, you could argue that, yeah, you can say it's COVID's fault. You could say what have you. Are them fans going to come back? I don't know, man. I think they will. I think wrestling fans are particularly loyal to a fault, probably. Um, I think these wrestling fans will come back. I think it's just going to be 
you know, a lot of the time, like I was speaking to Jessie yesterday, obviously, you know, she's a wrestling personality here in the UK. And she was saying, you know, she's just not been watching a lot of it because without a crowd, it's not the same. So I think more and more wrestling fans will come back once the crowds are back. I mean, it's it's difficult to say because I don't know. That, I don't know that they definitely will. I think the issue is at the minute you've got more people at home than you ever have had um, mm-hmm. because of the the global pandemic. And then people are choosing not to rock wrestling, and even people are, are dropping off from wrestling as well. Yeah, yeah. Partly because they're not giving us entertaining storylines and that sort mm-hmm. of. There's, there's no, there's no breakout star at the minute. Not in WWE. No. Not anywhere. Um, I don't. No, think. AEW has a couple. I, I, not, I, not in terms of like. So in the eighties, you had Hulk Hogan. Yeah. Well, no, well, no, well, obviously you've got your Jericho for that, and you've got your, you've got your, yeah, Jericho's there, Kenny Omega's there, Matt Hardy's there. They, they have similar, obviously not similar legacies, but a similar kind of effect on ratings. But none, um, of, none of them are, are sort of Hulk Hogan, Stone Cold Steve Austin, but, John Cena. But even. then, but then there's a more exciting, there's a more, there's a bigger vibe around new talent there, you know. Um, yeah, it's just, it, it's just not. At, none of them are at that level yet, and I, I and I just feel that wrestling needs that. It needs that. I mean, the closest thing we've had to it in recent years would be Roman Reigns. You know, with, with I would say push, I, you know? I say Jericho's there. Right. I say Jericho is there. I don't know if honest. he's. I, I think he's. I think he's at. I, I think he's at. You know, uh, Hogan level. To be honest. No. Uh, I was, I, I, in terms of mainstream appeal, no, I wouldn't I, say. No, I, I say global. I say, I say, yeah, not movies, but he, you know, he wasn't in the Jay and Silent Bob reboot. Um, yeah. As a KKK leader, yeah. Um, jokingly, uh, yeah. but yeah, um, I think in terms of you know music and arts and culture, Jericho's a big deal, and I think that he's he's the closest that that AEW have, and I don't know whether anybody in WWE is that way. No, I mean obviously Reigns is off TV at the minute, and we. But it just feels like there's no breakout star. And you look at times like the Attitude Era, where there was, you know, The Rock and Stone Cold were the two sort mm, of mm. forward stars. Nobody's at that sort of scale, and and there are exceptions to it. But John Cena was sort of approaching that sort of scale, uh, you know. And and it just feels mm-hmm. like there's no no one carrying the torch of wrestling, if you like, at the minute. Yeah, no, it's difficult. It's difficult at the moment. I think there's a lot of. You know, there's a lot of question marks around the future of wrestling, particularly British wrestling, mm, uh, mm. but certainly wrestling all over the world. Um, and obviously, if you look at it, you know, WB is more of a sports entertainment brand, which is why it still exists, I, I think. Um, I think one of the problems that WWE are, are doing, sorry to sort of say on this soccer topic, but I think it's quite a, an interesting one, is that they're... WWE don't create superstars anymore. What they create is the brand... WWE are more focused on promoting WWE than they are on promoting individual superstars. And a perfect example of that is Bray Wyatt, who the fans have sort of loved and sort of embraced this fiend gimmick. Yet WWE don't feel like they've promoted him. Goldberg is an example of that as part mm. of the Saudi show. Mm-hmm. Um, they don't feel like they're pushing him. It just feels like he's another. It's all part of the WWE machine. Whereas Stone Cold Steve Austin, The Rock, that was never the case. I think it's different times now. I think we live in a time of brands and social media followers and likes and things, and that's what WWE are going for. Mm. It's a very, it's a very different time. It's a very, very different time. And it's interesting because the raw viewership is a, a record all-time low of. Um, the 1.561 million um, between AEW and NXT, they're reaching sort of 1.4 million viewers. So that's that's a lot of wrestling fans that are split between them two brands on a Wednesday. Don't you think? Don't you find that interesting? I do, yeah. yeah. Uh, and obviously AEW have made that more of a thing on television. They're talking about the ratings, you know. So the, the demo god. The demo god, Chris Jericho. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he's uh, proper uh, I didn't really like that. I'll be honest. Uh, I think it's clever. I thought it was pushing. I just thought it was. I get, the, of, I get the pun. A lot of people do. A lot of yeah. people do. The thing that look, the thing with Chris Jericho, right? Um, not everything is going to land. I think, and for me, that one Le Champion or that one a little bit the bubbly. Do you know what I mean? I think no. he wanted it to be, but I don't think it was. I think it was. I think again. I think it's a different time. I think if we had a crowd, they'd be chanting it. 
demo god maybe he could bring back the pain maker gimmick to go more with that rock and roll let's move on kevin owings has made no secret earlier this week about wanting to return to nxt um he's was in an interview with cbs sports and he said for a while there it looked like i was going to head back to nxt he'd even discussed it with vince mcmahon and stuff like that and he was excited about it uh basically uh paraphrasing what he says he says that he feels like he didn't spend much time in nxt and there was a lot more that he could have done there and Mm -hmm. was excited about going to that brand and doing some work there i mean that would be awesome yeah but i don't think it's the best thing for wwe no, no. I mean, obviously, uh, Kevin has also uh, put himself across as a bit of a locker room leader this week, fighting for the masks and and yeah. also, you know, butting heads, so to speak, with Vince on this subject. Keeping well, it sounds track. like he's having a meeting with him and saying because yeah. he came out a while ago saying I'm not wrestling on these shows until this COVID's uh, done. So what it sounds like to me, and I'm I'm sort of taking from sort of everything that I've read, is that he's got in there and said, look, I'm I'm not wrestling in COVID. You've said that you've said that that's okay. You said. That to everyone that that's okay and mm-hmm. that we don't have to and Roman Reigns isn't doing it Sami Zayn's I'm choosing not to do it unless you have to put in these precautionary measures yeah yeah do you reckon yeah. that's how it's gone yeah yeah I think so and I think Vince has listened because he values Kevin's opinion um and yeah I mean we'll, you know we'll see what happens to Kevin Owens going forward and would you so yeah, the reason I say that I don't think it'd be good for Brand if he was on NXT is because I think he's one of the biggest bigger Raw stars you know I agree. I agree. Um, and I feel like if you lose everyone to NXT, you, you're going to really sort of suffer them brands. And Raw is sort of um, desperate for talent at the minute, or desperate for stars, indeed. really, aren't they? In, indeed it is, yeah. Mm. Hey, maybe Absolutely. maybe Adam Cole could go there and then swap out with Kevin Owens. Maybe that would be an interesting yeah. way to go. I mean, you know, I, but... Yeah, Adam will be a huge star on Raw if he went. So. <laughs> Who does? You know I what think... Vince is like? I think so. Um, it's not a happy Rusev day today, Dom. No, uh, Rusev currently has coronavirus on Miro, who has a very entertaining YouTube channel where he games and he, he talks about some of his past matches. Uh, Miro was rumoured, of course, to be in the four-way for the vacant Impact Championship. Um, obviously, that won't be happening now. Well, they sort of teased everyone, didn't they? Yeah, they spot. teased everyone, but Miro was a very strong, very strong candidate for various reasons. Um, and yeah, so it's a shame that he's he's ruled out of that now because I think he's one of the more exciting talents that people want to see uh, back on, back on a wrestling, uh, you know, in a wrestling context. Um, so yeah, you know, I mean, it's, it's sad, but obviously he's taking care of himself, taking care of uh, Lana and, and Lana's family and, and, and stuff. So you yeah, know, Lana's mum has come out of hospital now, so that's great news for Lana's parents. Yeah, yeah. So good. Just goes to show that, uh, like I say, America is dealing with it uh, differently to where, the way we are, uh, rightly or wrongly. Uh, yeah, I mean, of... opening up while they've still got like cases rising. It's weird. Yeah, yeah. So sort of you know, defies the point. But hey ho. Yeah. Um, let's stay on WWE and go back to NXT with Tegan Knox, who's come out um, as being an openly gay wrestler. Um, the first WWE female openly gay wrestler was Sonya Deville. And Tegan Knox has uh, apparently said that she's really helped her through this and stuff like that. So that's awesome. Mm-hmm. It's fantastic. It's great news. More diversity within the locker room is always interesting. And uh, and, well, and welcome. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, of course. Uh, DDP claims that QT Marshall tested positive for COVID-19 and DDP <sighs> says that he has had symptoms himself. Yeah, it's a shame. Again, again, we're seeing it all over the place, all over the wrestling world. Um, you know, these people are entertainers. They need to entertain. They need to earn money. But uh, obviously, at great risk to themselves and everybody else. Yeah, um, DDP, there was uh, very early on in this outbreak, there was a big thing about him and Jake because Jake had gone to see him. And DDP was like, that's fine. You can come and stay here, but you have to stay here. You can't leave, like... We need to be careful. Um, so, so DDP is obviously being very aware of it and yeah, and, yeah. and has put a lot of precautions in place. Uh, it seems like Jake's decided not to do that uh, to be part of the AEW roster. And I mean, that was a great opportunity for Jake and he's, he's been doing some wonderful stuff. Um, of course. But yeah, I think we're going to get more of these as the weeks go on. Excuse me. Indeed. Indeed, yeah. Cool. Uh, did you... Let's go on to AEW a little bit more then. Did you watch any of Fight for the Fallen? 
I did. I saw the Cage Moxley match. Um, that was pretty cool. I was really impressed by Sonny Kiss. Um, you've told me some of the tag team stuff was great. So yeah, uh-huh. I mean, I mean, um, by the looks of it, AW was 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 on point this week and did a great job. It was great, and the Jericho segment with Orange Cassidy. Continued. Oh, with the yeah, I saw the orange as brilliant. well. Yeah. Brilliant. The, the orange bath, yeah, great. Yes, yeah, with uh, Ortiz throwing himself like he couldn't swim. I, I thought I was in hysterics, man. I was yes. laughing out loud, out loud at 2 really in the good. morning in my flat. Um, really good. So staying on with AEW, Cody has been talking about the CM Punk. So obviously when AEW was first... Uh, being mentioned as a thing there's a lot of rumors about uh, cm punk and discussions with cm punk and cody has confirmed that them discussions did happen however they couldn't agree on a price yeah um cm punk is uh meant to be uh, astronomically expensive uh quite rightly i believe that cody has justified those expenses and saying that he's worth it um obviously a lot of people debate on uh, cm punk's wrestling worth since his ufc Uh, tumbles um, and losses, Uh, but I still think he carries a lot of weight. Obviously, he's great in terms of popular culture. You talk about um, a brand looking to succeed in popular culture. Uh, CM Punk is, of course, a bit of an icon in pop culture, in comics and and movies he's done as well. So I think that he's still worth the money that he'll be asking, uh, but obviously astronomical amounts and that is a word that i think was used yeah yeah, uh, yeah. by cut by conan i believe who said it so that's correct yeah so so yeah so i mean obviously i don't think it's going to happen i think if anybody does wrangle uh phil brooks chick magnet um chick magnet chick magnet punk um it will be wwe uh, and it will be for one or two matches yeah, I, next... I, I suspect so. I mean, I, I don't know. One of the things that Cody said is that it's not his money. Um, and I find that quite interesting. It's it, it's not his money to offer uh, Punk that contract, you know. Um, yeah. So while things were, were being thrown around, obviously they didn't feel that that value was uh, worth it for the starting company. Yeah, I mean, we don't see... I, I mean, we, we may still see CM Punk in AEW, and I do believe he will have a wrestling return uh, in the next five years, uh, I think he's he has a he has obviously a shelf life and a timeline, and I think he could he could set himself up for the rest of his life with two or three more wrestling appearances. Yeah, I think and, uh, WWE will have to, and that's 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 the sort of because uh, obviously raw ratings are very low right now. We've just been talking about that, and that is a real way to bump up ratings. Um, well, yeah, of you course. Saw, but... You saw on backstage like the episodes that had CM Punk on had a lot more viewers. Obviously, uh, yeah, yeah. I think a lot of wrestlers, uh, people like Disco Inferno, of course, take this for what it's worth now. Um, because you could you could interpret it as bitter or whatever, but there's a lot of wrestlers that that are sort of dragging on CM Punk as not a big not as big a rating draw as it used to be. Obviously, with uh, backstage, he didn't you know he didn't stop that program from from going off the air. No. So of course there there is speculation, and of course it's probably well founded that his ratings draw ability probably isn't what it was, but that doesn't mean it's not still. Brilliant. Yeah, I think you it'll know. still be one of the biggest in the world. I can't and, think of a bigger yeah. range draw. To and, be honest. and the people that are, you no know, disrespect, of course, to these individuals, but the people that are saying this in interviews are people like Disco Inferno from WCW um, and a couple of other of that kind of era WCW talent. So take that for what it's worth. Um, you know, I mean, the guy has made a very good living for himself outside of wrestling and comic books. He's obviously, yeah. like I say, he's been doing. He's, been, he's hosted a couple of TV series. He's done some um, movies. So, you know, he's he's just fine. I think he's doing just fine. And I know his wife is very successful in her own right as an author now. So, yeah, man. You know, they're okay. Yeah, good. Um... And, I, and I and I think that it would be an interesting debate one day because obviously this is the kind of thing that every wrestling blog and every wrestling YouTuber talks about but you know who those two or three matches because they they're going to have to be millions of dollars every time he makes an appearance um you know who he would have those matches against um well, who who, those... who are the biggest rating draws in who would you say are the three biggest that command the most well, Bro- well Brock Lesnar would be one I think I don't know if you would, but go on. I would say you name your three, and I'll name my so, three. Okay, really interesting then. I would say Brock Lesnar um, okay. 
for one of his matches because obviously they've got some history there as well. Oh, sorry, uh, I'm not on about uh, I'm not on about a fight with Punk. I'm on about just uh, uh, oh. individual wrestlers as a rating draw to whatever oh, company okay. they're in. What in the world? Or yeah, just... in the world. Let's go. Have some fun. Uh, Jericho, um, Lesnar when he's on, and. Obviously, we're looking at, I would say, Reigns or Cena. I would say Cena would be my third, but, of course, neither of those are regulars. Yeah. So, like, as in on, on screen now. On screen now. No, no, you, you can bring anyone in. It's, but then I also... Bring I have Hogan said if you want, dude. Oh, okay. No, you've, you've just changed the game then. Well, because uh, my... Cena, biggest... Cena, Cena, The Rock, and, and uh, Hogan. I now... Just... Now, people on screen across two, you know, across um, AEW and WWE, um, the, the people that are on screen, Bray Wyatt, Chris Jericho, and uh, I'm not going to say John Moxley. Uh, he would be my other people, but I'm thinking of another WWE guy because that's probably more tough to think of a WWE ratings draw. Um, Drew McIntyre, maybe. Okay. I think the um, the three biggest rating draws for any company right now would be um, uh, The Rock. Yeah, uh, but they don't. Yeah, but uh, yeah, the what? Rock. The Rock could wrestle. Yeah, but he's not. That's what I mean. Okay, he do could. me, do he me, could. do me, do me a no, three. I, 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 I'm doing you three all time. Like if if they right, come into a wrestling then, ring yeah. right now, it would yeah, be The no. Rock. I think the Undertaker, I think he still commands an audience, and uh, CM Punk, if he was to return, I think he'd be that he'd be right. top three. I think he'd be more so than John Cena. Okay, I I just I disagree um, on a global scale. Okay, um, but who are you three in terms of on television then? Now, regularly, Bray Wyatt. Um, probably Jericho. The other one's hard, man. The other one's hard. It is, isn't it? it is. Yeah. I mean, I mean, if you look at the YouTube stats, Drew, I guess. I don't know. I don't. But because he's on our TV so much, we don't. I, I don't <laughs> sort of. And he's in a feud with someone that he shouldn't be in a feud with right now. You know. One of the greatest of all time, of course, Dom Ziggler. Mm, yes. Okay. Moving on. Let's go back to AEW. I still a want you to pick. No, I want you to pick a third. Pick a third. Um, ratings draw now on TV. Regularly, yeah. Got to be uh, Adam, Adam Cole. Ooh, nice. Keith maybe, Lee. Uh, Keith Lee, maybe. Maybe Matt Riddle. Yeah. Oh, maybe, yeah. Maybe Riddle. AJ Styles. Maybe Daniel yeah. Bryan. Yeah, could be, could be. If if I was gonna pick matches for CM Punk to come back to, Daniel Bryan, because we talked about it before, Daniel yeah. Bryan, yeah, Brock Lesnar, and AJ Styles. I'd go oh. Daniel Bryan, AJ. I won't go Brock, but yeah, oh, I, I get oh. that it's a big match. My one interchangeable, if Brock wouldn't, it wasn't there, would be Matt Riddle. Okay, cool. Yeah, I'd go with them. They'd all be interesting matches. Mm -hmm. Hmm. Okay. Interesting. Let's move. Go back onto the news. I love getting distracted with you, man. We just talk wrestling. That's what we do on this podcast. Uh, AEW's uh, Tony Khan has talked out a little bit about um, the suspension of Sammy Guevara and Jimmy Havoc. Have you watched on YouTube? There's a preview for Fight with a Fallen Dom, and it's featuring Eric Bischoff and Comrade Thompson as well as Tony Khan. No. It's brilliant. It's really interesting because Tony Khan is talking about taking a lot of inspiration from WCW when they were winning the um, ratings war because there was for years, you know, in that sort yeah. of 97, 98. And he was saying how a lot of uh, what he did was using them good years of WCW and of which Eric Bischoff was a big part of uh, as an example to the executives of how he could bring wrestling back to TNT. Yeah, absolutely. It's a very, very good example. Uh, to a point. Uh, to a point. It's well, a very he, good example. Yeah, he was, he was very focused. I mean, Tony Khan is, is, is a, a wrestling historian. He really is. Um, mm. And he 
he he was talking about the the specific years and and why it didn't go bad. One of the interesting things that you talked about actually was um about the WCW exclusivity um contracts that Eric Bischoff had to shuffle. And one of the interesting things that Tony Khan said is that that that's a position he doesn't have to be in because he has no exclusivity, um, in the not exclusivity. What's the word? Uh, creative control within their contracts. Right. So he's got full control. Wait, what? So you said he's got no creative control? No, he Tony Khan has full creative control, unlike Eric Bischoff, who had so many contracts. Like Hulk Hogan had a contract where he had creative control, and same with Kevin Nash. And when you've yeah. got so many of them contracts, that's, that's for me, one of the biggest reasons that WCW fell. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. that makes sense. It's interesting. Um, it is. So he was talking um, to the New York Post um, about Jimmy Havoc and Sammy Guevara. He said, I suspended them both. Very different situations. But both needed to be addressed. And we are addressing both. I think Jimmy really needed counselling. If when uh, he were able to wrestle again, the most important thing for himself and everybody here is that he sought treatment and counselling. When he asked for that help, we're going to give it to him. In terms of Guevara, he talks a little bit about that. And paraphrasing, he sort of said it was a comment that he was unaware of that was made four years ago. Mm-hmm. And um, a very different situation. However, the, he felt the need to have to act on it because it was new information that come to light, which is why he's also been sent to a different type of counselling to what Jimmy Havoc has, has gone uh, through. Um, he says that he didn't want to rush into any decisions on either person, so he felt like until he had all the fa- all the facts, suspending both people was the right thing to do. Then he could make whatever the right decision is. Yeah, that makes sense. Very sensible, isn't he? Yeah, absolutely. Very clear. Very sensible. Well, one will one will of course see whether because it's Vince McMahon, of course, at this stage is Tony Khan stage of his WWE run was very involved and very much one of the boys, very much like Tony Khan is. Mm-hmm. So I wonder if, you know, 10, 15 years down the line in AEW, if uh, Tony Khan is still this, you know, talkative, this hands-on and, um, you know, um, as, as invested in the welfare of his talent. I think it's interesting. You, you bring up a really interesting point. At what point? Because Vince McMahon used to give interviews and stuff like that mm. to, to different media outlets. Obviously, none of that now. Um, and it, it was partly because he messed up a few times in interviews and, and came off looking not so good, not so positive in, in, in a couple of circumstances. So I wonder if that will end up happening. Because Tony Khan is one that will talk, you know, for a long yeah, Of course. Time. Yep. We'll see what happens. Interesting. Uh, on AEW, it was also revealed that Nyla Rose has a new manager. Um, it was revealed that Vicky Guerrero is her new manager. Excuse me, excuse me, yes. Excuse me. I mean, yeah, all power to her for still carving out a career. Absolutely. Um, I uh, remember the quotes from her saying that WWE will always look after her. I wonder if they still are. Um, or I wonder if they have now... Um, Obviously, she's under contract with AEW. Whether that responsibility has passed on to other employers, um, you know, I wonder to what extent their uh, WWE's support of the Guerrero family is still in place. Um, but yeah, great to see her still carving out a career. Great to see her still in this position. Well, it, it sort of makes sense because a lot of her friends seem to be in AEW. You know, like uh, people like Chris Jericho, who's obviously close with uh, close with. Eddie, but also Di Malenko, he's backstage, and him and him and Vicky have been close for years, haven't they? Of course, yeah. No, it makes com- it makes yeah. complete sense, yeah. I personally, I I don't really like the team up with Nyla Rose. Um, I think that also- I wonder how long it. I don't think it'll be something that's more than six months to a year. I don't think it'll last. Um, I think that Vicky Guerrero will go her own way in, and, and Nyla Rose will go her own way eventually. Uh, but Awesome Kong is busy, 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 busy mm. uh, filming television series. Yeah, of course, yeah. But then I I also just sort of think that... I, don't, I just don't think Nyla Rose needed it as much as someone like Penelope Ford. Now, I understand that she's got Kip Sabian, but there's no reason why you couldn't have had Vicky Guerrero manage both of them. And I think that uh, Penelope could really use that help on the mic, you know? Yeah, of course. Now we'll see what happens. Maybe, mm. maybe it'll be a stable. 
Yeah. Maybe, maybe we will see in the future. Uh, quickly on AEW as well, Tony Schiavone was missing from the show last night. He was um, he was out because his COVID nineteen test results that they do at AEW hadn't come back. It was uh, a bit late. Which is uh, good. Good to see safety in place. It is good, isn't it? Like if you don't have that result, you're just not on TV. Mm-hmm. Absolutely, absolutely. Great. Uh, let's move on from AEW then and talk a little bit about NWA. So Raven has come out as saying that the NWO, uh, sorry, the NWA, NWO, but yeah, they they went a long time ago. Um, <laughs> <laughs> oh no, there's still there's still there's still conspiracy theories out there. Is there? You know, John oh. Cena, John Cena in the NWO, remember? Ah, uh, <laughs> well, I, actually, AEW with the Horsemen, the, there's some interesting stuff there as well. But anyway, um. Because Cody's commented about maybe having the Four Horsemen in AEW. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like we'll see. How that's a big thing to sort of live up to. Because obviously they've got Arn and Tully in there as well, you know? Of course, yeah. Now mm. we'll see what happens. Be interesting. Uh, so Raven has said that he's heard rumblings of Corgan's closing the door on NWA. Yeah, I mean, I brought that to this conversation hearing, I think it was the Hannibal TV that Raven did a, a chat to That's saying right, this. Yeah, the but you, Canadian. You t- yeah, you've told me that, uh, that he's offered a rebuttal. Uh, yeah, Billy Corgan. Issue, and Billy yeah. Corgan's issued a statement saying that we are not shutting da- down, so please disregard any and all rumour to the effect. Why would Why would Raven know about that? Uh, Raven has a extensive history with the Smashing Pumpkins. He's been in a few of the videos. Right. Uh, and obviously, he's he's worked with uh, Billy Corgan as well in Impact and a few other things. So yeah, he's worked with Billy in, in numerous forms over the years. But he's not going to be on Billy Corgan's Christmas card list if he's spreading rumors that. Well, not Billy now, Corgan... no, no, <laughs> not now, no. Mm, interesting, but no, it, it's good for the NWA to carry on going, man. It's a different, yeah. a different. Um... A different company, a different choice for people to go watch. Healthy competition is always good. Cool. Um, so this weekend, again, we have got a video on Extreme Rules predictions, so go check that out. And uh, don't forget that Slammiversary is this weekend as well, so enjoy that. We'll probably be live to it in at least... Yes, of course. And I've got the reason why all of these events, uh, well, particularly, of course, Slammiversary is interesting is because all of the no-compete clauses... Um, of well, I think I think bar a couple that were released a few weeks later, um, have have expired as of today or yesterday. Yep. So uh, or certainly by Saturday. By Saturday, yeah. So so there so there is some uh, you know have at it in terms of who's going to show up at uh, Slammiversary because we know Gallows and An- Gallows and Anderson have signed, uh, but there is a vacant. You will note now. Um, uh, of course, we spoke with Ace Austin, who is, of course, one of those participants a few weeks ago on Soundsphere and Give Me a Whole Year, which you can check out. Um, but yeah, if you if if you there is a you'll note there's a vacant spot in a, the Triple Threat, sorry, Fatal Four Way for the vacant Impact Championship. Correct. I wonder, I wonder who will fill that spot. Uh, and the only thing that's been confirmed is that there will be at least one ex Impact champion debuting or re debuting. Oh, it's anniversary. If you was to be a betting man, who would you be putting your money on, Dom? Well, it's definitely not EC3. Um, uh, so I'm going to put my money on Eric Young or, because of the uh, the shots, um, oh, oh, James Storm. Thank you. James Storm. So, James Storm. He's, of course, been in an NWA. Uh, but I bet he's looking for some... But he's looking for something to do. And also, he was very, very popular in Impact and will always, obviously, he's, he's an Impact lifer or an Impact original, I believe. So, yeah. My money would be on Heath Slater. Okay. I think Heath Slater could show up as well. I don't think it's beyond the realms that he'll show up anyway. The reason I say that is because it feels like that whole angle with Jura McIntyre, which I thought really well uh, put uh, tied a knot on Heath's, uh, Heath's relationship with WWE. Um he wasn't going to be able to do that after this week, is he? No, no, so of course. That's part of the reason why I think it could do, be him. Do you think the debuting superstar that will probably more than likely be in that fatal four way for the championship is taking the championship? So no. if it's a if it's an Eric Young or a James Storm or a Heath Slater, are they winning it? Well, I don't know because it's great press if they do, isn't it? 
It's wonderful press. It's it's, it's the comeback. The comeback story. Yeah. Yeah. It's 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 not just this guy is in this company. It's this guy is in the company and he's our top star. Yeah, I think if you're going to do that, you probably better be better off doing it with Heath Slater. Um, Maybe. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, just because of the recent, you know, just because of 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 his his, his involvement with Drew, etc. So yeah, we'll I mean, see. EC3 has been throwing things left right. He's, he's uh, really he's, sort of. Oh, he, I he, I watched the interview with Sean Ross Sapp. Mm. Um, I'm still a bit a bit salty, as the kids say, about <laughs> EC3 turning us down the other week. Uh, I'm still determined to get him one day. Um, but yeah, EC3, um, after he turned us down for an interview, did an interview with uh, Sean Ross Sapp at Fightful, which is, of course, great because they do great content. They do, yeah. He was very, very adamant. Of course, it could be a swerve, but yeah. if, you, if you read his body language and his face, there is some genuine disdain there. You I know believe. what, though? EC3 is genuinely... Yeah, one of the he's he's he seems like the guy that people are talking about most from them releases because yeah. he's he's creating he's, all of yeah. this 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 newsworthy buzz around him. Yeah, of course, but he's not going to be going to Impact. He's going to AEW. I'd be happy with that, but hey ho, we'll see where it goes in the future. His his um beautiful kind of letter that you um the AEW you, one, yeah, that was you great. read out and that's. You know, yes, it could be a swerve, but he's already been to Impact. He's already been there. He's won everything you can win. I think he sees it. If you read, if you watch the uh, SAP interview, he sees. Like, he, I think he thinks he's done everything he can do there. I genuinely think you could send EC3 into AEW right now, and he could be champion within oh, a week. Oh, oh, 100%. He could, he could beat Moxley, and I actually yeah. believe he'd be a better, a better fit. I agree. The only, and then you have a power struggle between him and MJF for who's yeah. the most annoying or the most, sorry, the biggest heel or whatever, you know. The baddest, yeah. Yeah, the baddest. Yeah. So, yeah, I say for, for the longevity and the... the well, to be honest, the, you just have Adam Page take the title off easy three. Yeah. But, but I think that the fact that him and John Moxley in WWE had... It was it was yeah. easy for his only he, feud. Well, and... he talk, yeah, he talked about that quite extensively. Yeah. He, has a, he has a very good relationship with Moxley. Yeah. Um, so I think it's just for a foregone conclusion that in the next two to three months... Although he did say that... On his compete clause, which does expire, so I, so I got it. So he is his compete non compete clause starts tomorrow. So it's a so Friday. Right. Uh, he said he was going to get in a fight. Okay. So whatever that means. Cool. Great. I'm excited for it. I think it'd be great. Um, I, 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 yeah, I am really excited for what EC3 does in the future. And um, if I remember rightly, the John Moxley feud was about. The issue was they brought EC3 up and John Moxley had been had revealed that he was leaving WWE. Yeah. And so the fans were getting upset about Moxley leaving and then putting over EC3 on Moxley and therefore were just booing EC3. Yeah, yeah, of course. Is that right? I mean, yeah, that that's basically right, yeah. And uh, Moxley was very, very open about that in his interview with Jericho, saying how much he was looking forward to having a program, a program with, yeah. with EC3. Yeah. Um, I mean, one swerve we could experience, of course, is, is that he rejoins WWE and debuts, sorry, re-debuts on Sunday. But that's of course. I mean, it just seems like a. Again, he wasn't wasn't his language towards WWE wasn't the best either in this right. interview. So I think AEW is an almost foregone conclusion. I don't think he would go back to WWE. Why? Why no. do they want to hold a cup no. again? No. Yeah. You absolutely. Know, you can see the frustration. He was such a star in in, yeah, his, in NXT. And his and Velveteen Dreams feud was was outstanding. I mean, yeah, of course he was the he carried Impact. For a number of mm. years as well. Mm. So, yeah, anyway, we'll see what happens. Indeed. Uh, was it the control your narrative? You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, cool. Good for him. Good for him. Uh, rock and roll. Uh, thank you so much for joining us. If you have enjoyed the video, please hit that like button. Subscribe to the channel for more awesome wrestling content. And, um, and write a comment down below. Let us know what you think about all the news stories and say how good Dom's hair looks during lockdown. Um, thank you so much for watching us. Until Thanks, next man. time. Yeah, keep it. Keep it uh, no, no, we don't do that anymore. <laughs> uh, 
Give me a whole yeah. Give me a whole yeah. <laughs> this is broken, not hearted. Thank you for watching the Give Me a Whole Yeah Wrestling Podcast.